I've created a breadboard stand for the Raspberry Pi 5. Designed for Raspberry Pis using either the standard case with built-in foam cooling or with the Raspberry Pi Active Cooler. More about those later. The reason for having a breadboard stand becomes clear when you have lots of wires connecting between the GPIO pins and a breadboard. If you want to move the board around then you need to be very careful to not pull any of the wires out. In this example I had to be doubly careful as there's an Arduino and a Raspberry Pi both connecting to the same breadboard with quite a few connections. Neither is it a new thing as this video shows. This is from 2015, shows a Raspberry Pi 2 mounted on a commercially available breadboard stand. You could even create your own using a thin piece of plywood or an acrylic sheet. I've even created my own before using FreeCAD and my 3D printer. This particular one is part of my Model Railway Automation video series and includes mounting points for a Raspberry Pi, a motor driver and a mini breadboard. The Raspberry Pi is in a Pi bow case in this example. This one is the first I've created for the Raspberry Pi 5, which has only recently become available, and it also includes some additional features. The overall board is 120 by 150 millimeters in size, which should be accommodated by most 3D printers. There is an indentation at the top for the breadboard to be mounted inside. There are different types of breadboards with different sizes, etc. This is slightly larger than the breadboard I'm using and it should be forgiven for some variations in breadboard design. Then I've created another indentation where the Raspberry Pi is mounted. There are four holes for mounting the Raspberry Pi, which can take M2.5 screws. These can be used for the Raspberry Pi 5 with or without the case, as the holes are pre-drilled in the official Raspberry Pi case. I've included a further indentation for the feet of the Raspberry Pi case. Although it would have worked without this, I thought it would be a nice touch. I've also included a large hole where the SD card goes makes it possible to remove the SD card without needing to unmount the Raspberry Pi. That was really tricky on some of the other boards I've used. Finally, there are four screw holes for the legs. These can accommodate M3 screws, which can be used to screw the four legs into place. The legs have holes countersunk into them, which allows screws with hex socket heads to fit inside the feet. Here they are with the Raspberry Pis mounted onto them. The one on the left is a bare Raspberry Pi without a case. Even without the case, it is recommended to have active cooling. In this example, the Raspberry Pi active cooling fan mounted on the Raspberry Pi with spring clips. The one on the right shows the Raspberry Pi mounted in the official case with the case cooling fan. There is an optional lid, but that would not normally be fitted if you're accessing the GPIO pins. Here it is with the Raspberry Pi 5, an example circuit. This is the Space Asteroids physical computing game which I created. The Space Asteroids game has two versions, one written in Python with Pygame 0 and GPIO 0, and the other written in Scratch, recently updated to Scratch 3. The GPIO 0 version runs fine, but there appears to be a problem with the GPIO extension for Scratch 3 on a Raspberry Pi 5. I've posted a bug to the Raspberry Pi GitHub page. I hope that's something they can fix in the near future. So this example is the Pygame 0 version. I hope you find these useful. I'll provide a link in the description so you can download them if you'd like to print them yourself. Please give this video a like, and if you do make one yourself, please let me know in the comments. Thanks for watching, I look forward to seeing you in a future video where I'll be providing more details about the Space Asteroids game and about the Raspberry Pi 5.